Hello, hello everyone. Good evening, Pioneer Sisters. How are you? Um, it's a bit late in the night, but I think this is the best time to do this. I'm just coming on live to share my resurrection story. I have many resurrection stories and I'm sure everybody on here has different seasons in their lives where God has resurrected something in their lives, um, you know, with his supernatural power. And so this is the week of resurrection. Today is Good Friday. This is the day that Jesus paid a mighty price, laid down his life and paid the price for us so that we wouldn't have to do it. And um, so I feel like this is the perfect night to come on live and share this particular um, resurrection story because I also see in this season that we're in right now, in this season of quarantine, I see the Lord calling a lot of people to the place where he called me when I encountered the story that I'm about to tell right now. And so um, that would be my journey tonight is to take you through this journey that I passed through and also to encourage someone who might be receiving an invitation from the Lord to go come into this place with him. So, Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the price that you paid, that we will be free, the price that we paid, that we will have a testimony to share with others. And, Lord, I ask tonight that something I say brings your resurrection power in the life of someone who listens to me. In Jesus' name, amen. So, um, I want to talk about my journey of surrender. And so a lot of you who have followed me since I started Praying Pioneers, or actually when I started Wounds to Weapons, which is really uh, a segment of Praying Pioneers, people who have followed me from that moment have heard my full testimony. And if you're watching me and you joined this group, um, you know, after I had shared that testimony, if you scroll through the videos, the very first video is my full testimony of um, how I went through a very devastating divorce, how that situation um, brought me back into the presence of God. So basically I was backslidden. I gave my life to Jesus at a very young age, um, but then I got backslid and I backslid. And as of the time that I got married, I was just backslidden, right? Both I and, and, and my ex-husband, none of us were saved. Um, and, and in the midst of the chaos in the marriage, I went back to the Lord and rededicated my life and started a journey of walking through the Lord with the Lord. So now after I, and if you wanna listen to what happened, you know, the full details, just watch the testimony, but I just wanna talk about the journey of surrender that took place from the moment I gave back my life back to the Lord until this very day, okay? So um, everybody has a story. Everybody has a story. Everybody did not just overnight regain their joy, right? The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And sometimes there are situations that will rob you of your joy. And it will take a process to come back to the place of, you know, walking in the joy of the Lord. So when I did give my life to Christ, I was full of joy. I mean, as far as I was concerned, I had made the best decision of my life. And I still know to this day that I made the best decision of my life. And while I was in that new baby Christian phase, I mean, some of you know what I'm talking about. When you first get saved, it's like God begins to do miraculous things for you. He begins to fill you with his joy. He begins to give you like testimonies. You just say a little prayer here and boom, you get 
results you know you he gives you breakthroughs i mean you go to church i mean all the worship songs everyone is hitting you pa 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 all the messages are hitting your spirit you know until you get to the phase where he begins to trust you to endure persecution and i feel like there are people who are in that place that that's probably why i am sharing this tonight is that there are people who are now in that phase where you're in the midst of your persecution you're in the midst of your trying season and you remember in the days when you were that new christian the fire that you had the vigor that you had the joy that you had how easy it was to get results and you're asking yourself what happened but i want to say tonight that nothing happened other than that god is trusting you to mature into a season of having the ability to press in for what he wants to do rather than it coming very easily like it used to see because when you're a baby he has to make it easy for you he has to encourage you he has to give you testimonies he has to give you those moments that cause you to light up but there comes a time when you have to mature just like a new baby you give them their milk you give them their bottle they're sucking to, 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 and they're very happy it's easy when they cry you know they get the, if, if they're breastfeeding or drinking formula whichever that is it's very easy and as something happens between the months of four months to six months all of a sudden mommy begins to introduce like the solid foods that might require a little bit of effort to kind of chew and get down right so and sometimes it's hard for us because if god is trusting us and we, we we're like wondering if something has gone wrong and that is where i found myself in that season and what had happened to me is that immediately after i rededicated my life to christ to cut the long story short my marriage at the time went a 360 degrees turn what i mean by that was the night that i ran to church because my friend had been inviting me to church and i didn't want to go but the night that i finally ran to church and i said i don't know but god i need you in my life as of that time my ex-husband was already talking about filing a divorce um, his whole family were bent on the marriage ending. Um, there were so many other things that were going on. But from the day that I rededicated my life, within the next 90 days, not only was our marriage like healed, but we were now actually having a marriage blessing because we never really, you know, went to, to, to have a, a proper wedding. We got married in a court system. We didn't have a proper wedding. We had gone through counseling and all of a sudden we're now talking about a marriage blessing. We literally had a marriage blessing in this church and had a reception in our house. It, we did 90 days and it's like people, the, the very people that I was calling and crying and telling them about what was going on in a marriage, they could not believe the switch and the turnaround. And so for me, that was my first test of miracle. That was my first exposure of God turning things around like the Bible says. I can see everything turning around. You know that song. I saw everything turn around. So I knew God as a God that rescues. I knew God as a God that turns things around. I knew God as a God that can restore, right? Now check this out. About maybe another six months into the marriage, everything started again. So guess what I did? I began to call on the God who gave me a 360 degree turn. See, I had seen him do it once, so I knew he could do it again. I knew that it was possible for him to turn. And by this time, that one experience gave me so much faith in prayer that, I mean, I, I, I really, I mean, I joined the prayer team. At that time, I was already 
you know, plugged into a church, plugged into a prayer department. I've always served in the prayer department. Um, and so I kind of, I was very confident that my marriage was not going to end. I was very, very confident that God will restore my marriage. Why? Because I saw him do it once. You see, but what I couldn't, what I didn't realize was that God was going to take me on a journey of faith. So it wasn't about the marriage. It was about a journey of faith. It was about a journey of restoration, but not necessarily restoring the marriage, but restoring identity and trust in him. And that's the section of my resurrection story that I want to tell tonight, because I believe that somebody needs to believe that the process they're going through is really God working. And so I was devastated when the marriage ended. Three things happened. One, I questioned God. Two, I got angry at him. There are two different things. Questioning God is like, what are you doing? Being angry is like, for me, my language was, if you knew you were going to take it away anyway, why did you give me that first 360 degree turn? Why did you do that? It, why didn't you just let it crumble at that time? And then I could have walked away and then I could have just said, you know, you know, I found God, my marriage ended, I'm moving on. Why did you have to give me a taste or give me that glimpse of hope or make me to know that you're able to really turn things around? Why did you then let it die? And I stayed in that place of anger for a while because it didn't make any sense to me. I prayed for my marriage. I prayed for my marriage more than I've ever prayed for anything in my life. I prayed for restoration. I prayed for salvation for my ex-husband. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed, but it crumbled. And today I know that restoring and rebuilding is my assignment. I understand my process now, but back then I didn't. And so after my season of, um, I want to call it anger, <laughs> you know, and I finally got to the place where I was ready to talk to the Lord and say, Father, I missed it. I can't be angry. You're the only person I have. So there's absolutely no way that I can stay angry at you, right? And when I came back to that place, the Lord said, okay, now you're ready, daughter. Let me tell you what's really going on here. And, and, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm shortening it, but it took a long time. And the whole time I was angry, I, I need to say this, I feel like somebody needs to hear this. The whole time I was angry, I was still worshiping. The whole time I was angry, I was still serving God. The whole time I was angry, I was plugged into church. I was doing everything, I was praying. So I didn't know that I was angry at the Lord. I didn't know that there was a section of my heart that was closed off because of that question mark there. And I was saying all the right things. And I'm going to pause right there right now. Because sometimes you've gone through too much. You've had so much complex persecution in your life that it doesn't make sense and in your subconscious mind, you're really questioning God and you're really angry at him and you don't know it. And let me tell you what the Bible says, Jeremiah 29, we always quote Jeremiah 29, 11, and it says, um, you know, for I know the thoughts that I have for you, thoughts to prosper you and not to harm you. But then if you go down to verse 13, it says, and that you would find me when you seek me with all of your heart. And when you're angry at the Lord subconsciously, because nobody is angry and they know they're angry and they wouldn't do something about it. I'm talking about that subtle thing in your spirit that you are not even aware of. When you are in that state, it is you're not able to give God or to seek God with all of your heart. And so I'm speaking to that person tonight. Repent of the anger, repent of the misunderstanding of your process 
and the resentment that it's built up towards God. Repent of it so that you can then seek him with all of your heart. And the Bible says that's when you will find him. So back to my story. So the first resurrection in that journey is my ability to recognize that I needed to seek God with all of my heart. And that was when he began to speak. And he said to me, yes, I let it crumble. The lessons I learned from that is one, that it wasn't my prayers in the first time that turned the situation around. It was just God. It was his faithfulness, his mercy. He just wanted me to know he needed to give me some glimpse of hope and he needed to mature me in trust in him in seeing that he can actually be trusted. That was the first thing he did. Now the question, why did the marriage still end? Because sometimes you can pray things into being that may not necessarily be the end goal or the end plan of God for your life. That was the second lesson I had to learn. One is that it's really not your prayers that brings about your breakthrough. It is just God being a good God, period. So don't get it twisted. Why? Because after that second time, ooh, I was like, I'm going to pray just the same way I did the first time. I'm going to, I'm going to pray and pray and pray. And all of this is going to, you know, come back to normal. Why? Because I, you know, it happened the first time it's going to happen again. My confidence was in my ability to pray. So me wanting to pray and use my spiritual energy to bring about what I wanted was more important than me really allowing the will of God to play out like he wants it to play out in my life. And I'm saying that for somebody tonight that just because you battle for something and get it doesn't necessarily mean that it's truly God's will. If it's sustained, then it's God's will. I had to learn that. And then I came to the place of recognizing that God's will and plan for my life was more important to me. And that restoration didn't have to look the way that I thought it would. The very thing that you've lost, that you're trying to get back, when restoration comes, it doesn't always have to look the same way and allow God to decide what your restoration would look like. But there is a guarantee though, that your, when he restores, he will give you more than you first had, but his method of restoration belongs to him. So we're going to battle for what we want. We're going to contend for what the blood has already purchased for us with the understanding that it's already ours and the battle has already been won. However, we must surrender to his process and the way that he chooses to do that. And all of this was going on in a secret place. So that's something else I want to talk about tonight. This particular resurrection journey led me to a place of being not only resurrected in my identity because I had to find myself back, not only resurrected in my passion for life, but I was resurrected to life being surrendered to God. And so right now I'm surrendered. I said, Lord, whatever you want to do with my life, however you want restoration to look in my life until you are done with your work, I'm going to be fulfilling purpose. I'm going to be focused on fulfilling the divine assignment for my life. Because when I show up in heaven on judgment day, God is going to be more concerned that the assignment I was given on earth, that it was carried out. And I want to hear good and well, a faithful servant. That's what I want to hear. 
I want to hear well done. And that's what matters. That's what being surrendered is all about. What do you really want to hear at the end of the day? I want to hear well done, faithful daughter. Well done. These are the gifts that I gave you. This is the assignment I gave you on earth. This is how you fought for what the blood has already purchased. And we're going to have to, yes, trust God for the things that we desire, but we're going to come back to the place of total surrender. And that happens in a secret place. That happens in the time that you're spending with the Lord. That happens in a place of prayer. That happens in a place of worship. That's when you hear all that, not when we're running around. And that brings me to today. In this quarantine season that we're in, God is bringing us back to a time to quiet down. But sometimes we don't know how to quiet down because we've never really been steeled. You know, a friend of mine wrote a book called Wise Her Steel. I mean, I just love that. Wise Her Steel. And, and the book is about the wisdom of God and how God would quiet your soul with his wisdom. And the end of it, Wise Her Steel, you know, and I, that came out of Be Steel and Know That I Am God. God is wanting to quiet a lot of people in this season, bring you to a place of stillness so that he can begin to download into you. Download what he wants you to do. Download who you are. Download his plans and his purpose for your life. Download to you what you're supposed to do after this quarantine season. You know, there's a lot of running around right now and a lot of, you know, chaos and everybody is responding to what's going on and we should respond to what's going on. But I feel like the after effects of what's going on is actually greater than what is going on right now. And God is preparing people that he's going to place in the kingdom to respond to the after effect. But you're going to have to be prepared in the place, in the secret place. Why? Because you really don't want to run on empty. So if we're running around right now, we're going to end up not being able to run full when it's really time to run because you're running on empty. So if you feel the Lord pulling you to himself right now, pulling you to a season of quietness, pulling you to a place of being in a secret place, let it be. Let it be. It's a time to be quiet. It's a time to allow his love to quiet you. One of the scriptures that the Lord used to bring healing to me was Zephaniah 3. And it's where he says, I think he was 317. And it's in my first testimony, that one testimony video that I'm talking about. And the, the, the scripture says that God will sing over you and quiet you with his love. For some of us, we need more healing. We need, we need deeper healing. There are deeper levels that he wants to touch so that when you emerge, your stream is pure. And he's calling you to a place where he could quiet you with his love, where he could reveal to you that you are his beloved. He wants to fill you up so that you don't run on empty afterwards. So let it be. Let him have his way. Let him have his way. You know, don't fight the process. Let other people run around. You know, don't let what other people are doing dictate your times and your seasons. Oh, do not allow what other people are doing to dictate your own time and your own season in life. God has your times and your seasons. Declare that your times and your seasons are synchronized with the timing of God for your life. He could be having you lay down right now and let it be. Be yielded to what he wants from you. Why? Because he wants to give you revelations. Depending on where you are, it could be revelation of who he is. It could be revelation of his love for you. It could be revelation of what he wants you to do. Whatever the case may be, let God download to you. 
I want to read a scripture to you. Remember Peter, when Jesus said to Peter, blessed are you Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. What was the story? What was going on before this? Before this, Jesus had asked them, the disciples, and he asked his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? And they were, they replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others say Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But Jesus said to them, but what do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? What God was asking them is, what is your own personal revelation of who I am? What is your story? And what is the revelation of Christ that you got out of your own personal story and journey? And Peter said to him, you're the Messiah, the son of the living God. And then Jesus replied to him, blessed are you. For flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. When you come out of your season with the Lord and you open your mouth and testify your own personal revelation of God, people will know that flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. And then God said to him, on this rock, which is, means on that revelation that you have, I will build my church. Remember that he is the church. You are the church. We are the church. And the gates of hate will not prevail against it. The gates of hell cannot prevail against your personal revelation of who God is. But that comes to spending time with him. If we look at it in today, in today's terms, Jesus was really asking them, besides all the big preachers that you listen to, what do you really know of me that is born out of your own one-on-one -on -one with me? And the disciples were like, oh, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're Elijah. What that looks like today is saying, who is God to you? And you're like, you know, Daddy T.D. Jake said, and Papa Bill Johnson said, and um, you know, who are all the other big preachers that everybody listens to? Oh, and you know, Papa Hagen, when he was preaching, he said this, um, um, you know, uh, Joel Osteen's book that I read back then, and that happened, and God said, that's all good. Those are my sons. I sent them. They're speaking out of their revelation of me. Everything that they walk in was built based upon their revelation of me. Upon this revelation, I will build my church. But God is saying, who do you say that I am? What is your personal journey? What is your personal story? What have you allowed God to process you through so that you have your own personal revelation in that area? Are you being still enough to allow God to do that? Are you quieting down enough? Could this quarantine be an invitation to get to that place? And God says, upon that revelation, the gates of hell will not prevail against you. Your ministry, your assignment on earth, whatever it is that you hold on to from that place of revelation, the devil cannot take it away from you. And no human being can steal it away from you either. Because God will give you things to do. He's going to transform you. He's going to propel you upon that revelation that he gives you in your time with him. So let's get back to that place. Let's dance to his rhythm. Let's recognize and embrace the fact that our own life paths are unique and that we can't do what everybody else is doing. Let's allow God to process us through. So let's come to the place of surrender and allow God to have his way.
and go through the process of holiness and consecration and allow the sanctification process to truly come to full maturation in us. Why? Because God needs us in this end times. He needs us to run, but we're not going to run empty. We're not going to run on empty. So we're going to get back to the place of stillness get back to the place of prayer, get back to the place of deliverance, fasting, purging, and processing. And that is my message tonight. Why? Because tonight, Good Friday, Jesus paid a price. He paid it all. He paid it all. And he paid the price so that we can just walk on what he's already accomplished. So when we're walking below what he's already accomplished, it's like an insult to the precious blood. And we ought to fight for everything that he's already purchased for us. But it begins with us yielding to him and even understanding what it is that was already purchased for us. And if you're listening to me tonight, you're not born again. It's time to give your life to Jesus. It's time to give your life to Christ. We're talking about all that he purchased for you. He purchased it all. He purchased sound health. He purchased joy. He purchased harmony. He purchased relational healing. He purchased everything, whatever problem it is that you're facing right now, your finances, everything, Jesus already paid the price. But the greatest gift he's given us in exchange is eternal life. So if you're not born again, embrace Jesus tonight. Ask him to be your Lord and personal savior and you would receive that eternal life and the Holy Spirit will come to dwell inside of you. And guess what happens? You now have access to all that he has already purchased. And if you choose to walk in disobedience, there is a price to pay for that too. And the choice is yours. The choice is yours. It could be disobedience of not responding to his nudging. It could be disobedience to not quieting down and listening and allowing him to have his way. Whatever it is, it has a cost. And the choice is yours. So tonight we're going to pray. We're praying for God to give us the grace to see spiritually all that he has purchased for us and to give us the grace to go after it. And of course, we're going to pray for physical healing, pray for our bodies because of the season that we're in right now. We will constantly pray over our health and our bodies. But before I begin to pray, I just want to read a scripture to you, Romans 8, 11. And it says, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells inside of you. The power that raised Jesus from the dead, the same power that raised him from the dead is the same power that will raise up your body. And if that power dwells in you, what kind of sickness, what kind of virus can survive your body? So tonight we're going to pray. The Holy Spirit strengthens our body. The Holy Spirit quickens our body. So Father, we bless your name tonight, oh God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the price that you paid. We thank you for what the blood has purchased for us, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you were bruised, oh God, for our own sake. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that because of your chastisement, 
that, by, that, you, that, that we are healed, oh God. We are healed, Lord Jesus Christ. We are healed, Lord Jesus. We are healed. Our bodies are healed. We declare healing over our bodies tonight. We declare healing over our souls tonight. We declare that we are strengthened, oh God, not only in our in our bodies, in our inner man. Because God, you already paid the price. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. We glorify your holy name, God. We expect miracles in our bodies tonight. We expect miracles in our souls tonight. We pray that the resurrection power of Christ is flowing through our bodies, flowing through our minds, resurrecting our souls, resurrecting our bodies, resurrecting our thoughts, resurrecting our ideas, resurrecting and quickening us, oh God. We declare that we are awakened in our spirits this night. In the name of Jesus. Father, let there be an awakening of our spirits, O oh God. O Rabba Sheken Derebo Sete. Father, we thank you for an awakening of our spirits. We declare that we are awakened. We declare that every slumbering spirit is awakened tonight in the name of Jesus. That the power that resurrected Christ is waking us up. That we are awakened to Christ. We are awakened to whom he is. We are awakened to the times and seasons of our lives. We are awakened, oh God, to a place of intimacy with him. We are awakened in our prayer lives. We are awakened, oh God. Father, that you're breaking the seal over your word, oh God. That we are awakened even in our comprehension, oh God, of your word. We declare an awakening of everything that concerns us tonight. Awakening of the season that we're in. Awakening of why we're in that season. Awakened, oh God. Awakened enough to redeem our time, oh God. Father, give us the grace to redeem our time, Lord Jesus. That we will not waste our time. We will not waste our seasons. We will not waste, oh God. But rather that we will walk, oh God, with a consciousness, oh God, of the end times, a consciousness of the time that we're in, oh God. And that we would fight, Lord, to be all that you have called us to be, Lord Jesus. By your stripes we have been healed, Lord. So we pray for healing for everyone on the line, God. Everyone who might have symptoms. Anyone who has family members that are already having symptoms. Those who are already sick. Father, we stand on what your blood purchased. You purchased health for us, oh God. We declare, oh God, that healing is the bread of the children, oh God. We declare, Father Lord, that they will receive your healing, all those who are sick, God. And those who are not sick, Father, we decree and declare that we are living in a realm and dominion that is above sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for clarity, O oh God. We pray for quietness and stillness in this time that you have us, Father Lord. I pray, Father Lord, that our heavens are open, our portals are open to receive your messages, to receive revelation, O oh God, to receive, to have intimate conversations with you, God, about what you're doing, Lord Jesus. I pray for an intimacy, God, a, a deepened intimacy with everyone that is praying along with me tonight, as well as myself, Father Lord. Take us to the place of deeper intimacy with you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we cover our families. We cover everything that concerns us with the precious blood of Jesus. And we declare that the Lord is like a wall of fire around us and the glory in our midst. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you and happy resurrection weekend. May the power that resurrected Christ from dead resurrect every area of your life. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you. Until next time, remain a praying pioneer. Bye-bye.